I recently had the opportunity to sit down and talk with Lama Paul Dendroma about her book, Love on Every Breath, Tonglen Meditation for Transforming Pain into Joy. I hope that you'll enjoy the interview. The subtitle of Love on Every Breath is Tonglen Meditation for Transforming Pain into Joy. What is Tonglen Meditation? Tonglen means taking and sending in Tibetan, and what we're doing in this meditation is transforming the suffering, either that we're feeling in ourselves or that we're feeling in, in the world. We're transforming that in the heart into love, into joy. And this particular version called Extraordinary Tonglen in Tibetan, and that I call Love on Every Breath, because it's coordinated with the breath, is uh, also very powerful in that in the heart is a vajra of diamond light that is not only symbolic but embodies awakened mind, awakened presence. And the feeling of that becomes more and more real and actualized as we do the practice more. And so that's what's transforming the suffering is our awakened mind, which is inseparable with awakened mind everywhere. Mm. And tell us more about the taking and sending and what is being taken and sent. Yes. <laughs> so when we just want to engage in practice or if we just become aware of suffering in ourselves or outside, then the taking and sending part is really breathing in that suffering and instantly having to be transformed by this Vajra of light. So actually this the awakened mind that's in ourselves that's kind of usually out of our consciousness, dormant, we're activating that in the practice. And that's actually a secondary benefit of the practice. It helps us really get in touch with our awakened mind, which of course isn't secondary, but <laughs> it's an added benefit. And so that feeling of the awakened presence in our heart transforms that suffering into love, into joy. And then that light goes out and is healing and transformative. Both the on-the-spot version and the complete version have eight steps, but you can also just take one step and do it from either at any time. If you do sitting on the cushion, the complete meditation, it can take anywhere from probably about 20, 25 minutes to an hour. It's really up to the person how long you spend on each step. And the more deeply you know the practice, it also then becomes easier and easier to just do it in an instant mm -hmm. on the spot, what I'm calling on the spot, in daily life, like if something happens. Yeah. If you see suffering on the, you know, in, in, on the street or in the news or whatever. Uh, and it seems like this is very timely since with everything that's going on in the world right now, it can feel like you don't know what to do to help. Exactly, and that prompted me to write this book because so many people I know and hear of, especially across the United States, but I know this is happening all over the world, are actually kind of overwhelmed by the suffering that is going on in the world right now and overwhelmed also personally by our own suffering at times yeah. and by the feeling that we don't know what to do. And a lot of people engage in you know political activity or social justice and everything, which is fantastic. And, um, but also, this gives something we can do in our inner life mm -hmm. to really transform those feelings so that our outer activity is even more powerful. Yeah, wow. And also so that we're at peace in ourselves and not feeling overwhelmed by the suffering, which hinders our ability to actually do anything and also is obviously not a very happy place to reside. Would you say that meditation is, in times like these is more important than ever? Yes, yes, because we really need internal resources right now to be able to deal with the chaos that our um, world is in and the crises facing humanity. Yeah. We need inner resources so that we feel strong and confident and so that there's a wellspring of nourishment inside ourselves in order for us to be able to meet our lives and what's happening. Yeah. You mentioned the on-the-spot variation of 
this meditation. Can you give us an example in everyday life of maybe where that would come into effect? Yes. So I'm really excited about this and it's really a great modern adaptation, but my teacher, who is one of the great old Tibetan masters, adapted in this way also. And so say, for example, you're walking down the street and you see like a mother talking harshly to her child. And you can't, maybe it isn't appropriate for you to interfere, nothing really, in, you know, extreme is happening, but like unkindness, and you want to do something, so that's a perfect moment then to just breathe in the suffering of that child and the mother too, maybe, mm -hmm. and then just breathe out the light and the love. I them. love that, yeah. And lots of, it would be good in traffic as well, I think. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I have a lot of students, and I do too, in traffic often do it instead of getting angry. You say in the book that the primary issue that arises for people learning the Love on Every Breath meditation is, I'm already overwhelmed by suffering, my own and that of so many. The last thing I want to do is feel more pain. So what advice perspective do you have to offer those people? Yes, so the regular version of Tonglen, which is wonderful, but that's the downside, is that because uh, there isn't this light in the heart chakra, there isn't the Vajra there, the ego feels like it has to do the transforming. Mm. And that's what feels overwhelming for people, because it's the ego that gets trans that gets overwhelmed, not our awakened nature. Mm. The awakened nature is boundless and has endless resource. And so in, in this practice where you're actually imagining this Vajra, which is a very powerful symbol, and again, all of this becomes more and more real in your experience as you do the practice, just like any meditation, but that Vajra then, the awakened mind itself, transforms the suffering, not our little ego, which is the part of us that's already feeling bedraggled or overwhelmed or like, I don't want more suffering, you know. Yeah. And then also, that's why in this meditation we focus on ourselves first. And we really work with our own suffering, our own feelings and everything from the awakened perspective in order to heal and to help awaken ourselves and to fill ourselves with, with loving kindness. And what do you most hope that readers will take away from your book, Love on Every Breath? I'm really hoping that readers then ha take away a meditation that they can do either on the cushion or any time that can really open their hearts to love for themselves and all beings and ha have a method to feel like they can really work with transforming their own suffering and the suffering of the world.